Hey guys, welcome back to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Uh, so today you'll hear a, uh, another short episode, a uh, short uh, Vani Resistance Report, originally submitted to and um, published in the October 28th, 1970 edition of Ocean Living. Uh, this article is part of the complete publication, Ocean Freedom Notes, Ocean Living, 1967 to 1980, which will be available uh, via paperback um, on the Liber- Libertarian Type Publications website here in the next couple of days. And uh, obviously, as with everything else, it will be available for free on the Fawny website, too. I uh, just haven't gotten to that point yet. I still have to actually get a list on the LUA, LUA website, too. So, um, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, get to it today. Hope you enjoy this uh, Vani Resistance Report, and uh, maybe I'll be back tomorrow with another one. Uh, we'll see. Enjoy. The Spirit of Laissez-Faire, Avani Resistance Report. One evening in February this winter, I leapt ashore after our oil tanker docked in Providence, Rhode Island, ran to the payphone, called Seafarer Yachts in Huntington, Long Island, and ordered a Seafarer 26-foot sailboat, sailboat hole. That phone call was the climax of my winter's work and planning in the beginning of Laissez-Faire. I continued sailing on Atlantic tankers till April 20th, when I took a long-awaited six-week vacation. The hole was delivered to my backyard on the 26th of April. That was the day I had lived for all winter. While standing watches with frozen feet, blasted by the Atlantic's winter gales, through the seemingly endless days of scraping and painting, through six months of straining to hold my mind back to the routine of shipboard life, that was the vision which made it possible for me. I went to work with a will. What a joy it was to be working for myself to be directly responsible for all aspects of the project. Bulkheads and deck beams were fitted and glassed in. 2,500 pounds of lead was poured in nine sections for inside ballast. Plywood decks were bolted, glassed, glued, nailed, and screwed to the frames. The cabin trunk went on and cabin top beams were fitted. The mass partners of two and a quarter inch white oak were bolted in with four 21 inch bolts. A living larch tree was selected and cut for a mast. By the time I had completed that much of her, it was time to return to work on Atlantic tankers again, and that's where I am now. I'll work till the middle of August, quit the job, and return home to finish her. I hope to depart for Florida via the Intracoastal Waterway no later than November. After that, the world. So far, the costs have added up this way. $1,150 for the bare fiberglass hole, approximately $700 for options and transportation to my home, and about $900 for materials so far. I hope to finish her, equip her, provision her, and launch her for another $1,500. I'm building and rigging her with single-handed sailing and living in mind. The rig will be a 250-square-foot Hong Kong junk-style mainsail. The mast will stand with no side stays and one forestay, on which various jibs can be set to balance the large mainsail. She will have a wind vane self-steering setup. I plan to lead all running rigging to cleats near main hatch, so in rough weather I can sail her from inside the cabin with just my head up through the hatch, which will be protected by a dodger. The interior shall have one bunk with floor space for visitors, a large desk chart table with a comfortable sea, a head and a galley, and lots of stowage space. All the area forward of the mast will be used for stowage, as will the space beneath the cockpit. This project has had many advantages and favorable side effects for me. Ever since I quit college last summer and decided to undertake it, I have the experience of living and working for a purpose. This was new to me. I like it very much. I cannot conceive of ever living without a purpose and goals in the future. Before this, I had read all of Ayn Rand and much general libertarianism with great enthusiasm. But now that I've got a purposeful direction in my own life, I see all these ideas in a new light. That of living them, not just liking them. That, to me, is an invaluable improvement. I have found an area where I have an extreme degree of affinity with reality. What more can be said? I decided to name her the laissez-faire many months ago when I decided on a life of the same nature. This is what I see small boat living as making eminently possible. I'll have a snug home capable of easy, economical mobility, a readout, a fairly self-sufficient home base from which I can view and visit the world of men as briefly or as intimately as I wish. I can partake of all that coastal civilization has to offer, and when it becomes too little or the price too high, I can hoist my sails and search for the new and better. 
I will support myself with intermittent work and by my own writing and painting. What I feel now is the joy of impending freedom with no barriers, no limits, with my life in my own hands, and my success coming from my own sight, and thought, and action. David C. Englehart You've just heard The Spirit of Laissez-Faire, a Vani Resistance Report, originally published in the October 28th, 1970 edition of Ocean Living. And again, this will be available uh, via paperback on the Liberty Anti Publications website in the next couple of days and for free uh, here on the Vani website. Um, so I guess just a, a couple of uh, conclusionary notes here. Um, so yes, it was uh, 1970. Uh, I will uh, go ahead and figure out just uh, just out of curiosity, give you guys an idea. Say 2,700, um, say five grand in uh, 1970. Yeah, I can't even imagine after uh, this year. Let's see. So five grand in 1970, 33,534 dollars uh, today. For those curious about the uh, the price, the, uh, the inflation difference there, um, to give you an idea on price, um, so maybe for for thirty five thousand dollars, and you, I'm, I'm sh- hopefully you could find one find one for cheaper if anyone's interested in doing this. I haven't looked into it at all, um, but yeah, it looks like David uh, constructed it himself, and uh, I think that's a, a wise a wise decision. Um, certainly a wise decision in, in terms of self sufficiency and independence. Um, if he built the entire thing himself and he can fix everything that goes anything that goes wrong. So smart decision. Um, of course, I don't know what's uh, what uh, ever came of of David. Uh, hopefully, uh, he set sail for sunnier waters, and uh, things uh, things went uh, went swimmingly, um, pun intended. And uh, I, I see no reason why it's uh, why it wouldn't. So, um, with that said, thanks for tuning in today. And uh, maybe I'll, like I said, be, like I said at the beginning, maybe I'll uh, be back tomorrow with another one. And I'll close with the uh, I guess the the closing statements that. Uh, Tom and Roberta made in uh, Vanu Life Number One. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your path on. And I would uh, add, uh, hopefully, a, a year of liberation as well. But uh, thanks, guys. <laughs>